Hello everyone, so this is module number 9 for AWS Cloud Practitioners Essential Exam Preparation. So, uh, in this module, this is the last module in fact, and uh, it's a very important module too. So, the thing is that uh, mostly you need to, as a practitioner, um, suggest the companies to migrate from the on premises service or on-premises means that something is uh, some companies has their own database and their own in-house uh, data house management so you want to suggest them that uh, instead of having your own computer and managing your own computer you can just shift your everything to cloud well great so um, there are some principles some ways something keep into mind and some stuff uh, conceptually you need to have in your mind before you can suggest this journey so great so in this session we'll discuss uh, some innovation at aws some aws cloud adoption framework which is the most important and some factor and strategies important for my mission, right other than that there's some other stuff as well there too well, great. Uh, what is the cloud adoption framework? Cloud adoption framework means that what is the perspective for any business to shift its business from on-prem? And on-prem means that it it is on database computation power and stuff physically instead of managing that shift to the cloud. Great. So um, CAF helps you. To manage that process for this smooth migration actually great so perspective wise whenever you think about shifting your application let's take an example so for example i am um, i have a business which suggests people about traveling guide similar to for for your for your <clears throat> vacations that is uh, give you a planning and suggest you that uh, which point you need to touch and how you can manage so for example you just uh, write i have uh, one day time to visit uh, rome uh, give me with respect to you know all the uh, priorities in other uh, checks give me the list and timetable how i can do that for example this is our app which also suggests multiple times we have our own database but we want to shift it to the cloud because many people told us that it is uh, cost effective more secure more efficient and more optimized way to do that and it's a lot of stuff is easy there it is data for many people many big companies are using that so first we need to always have look some you know perspective about that so business capability you know what business do i have if i shift my database from in my application and services from the on premises to the cloud what additional value i have do i have some cost benefit do i have some operational uh, qualities uh, is it possible it is not possible uh, for example business wise is it more faster and reliable so many aspects so overall what is the overall benefit well if we think that we do have benefit if we shift to our application because can content delivery service on amazon automatically manage it and our user have more exp good user experience number one number second we can use the stage maker or built-in machine learning techniques to uh, get some suggestions automatically text tokenization let's say like that so we see that there is a lot of potential in there right then you see well uh, the kind of people we have uh, are they enough trained what additional certification they need how much more people i have to manage or either i have less people in the end so what is cost benefit analysis for example i have 10 people or 20 people managing my warehouse or my database bases and then might be i have only two three person but i need first need to restructure everything i should need to see that uh, how long contact of these people i have and how i can hire new people 
Then, uh, for example, what is the governance, governance uh, problem? For example, if I have data sitting in my computer, which is in Europe, and compliance with uh, GDPR, but uh, what is about uh, Amazon? If I shift it, is it okay or is it not how data will travel or security? So, simply, then some technical problem like platform wise. Which number of uh, so which platform capabilities it's uh, using? So, rather, I'm using Lambda. Uh, how much my services list on the on premises? Is it hybrid approach? Is complete migration platform wise? What are the services which is going to give me edge? Do I want to restructure everything? Secure is uh, evident in operation. How I do business, right? So this is a complete uh, you know, adoption framework. We discuss uh, many different people. For example, as I discussed that um, number of people more you need, governance and security, you mean, well, over IT system, right? What are the new system, workload, load balancing. So everything is kind of a little bit changed on the cloud because might be you have some people who are doing some efficient programming in script and in legacy mode, they shift load automatically based on certain rule regulation or, or, or they are using some uh, existing old um, Linux based um, tool uh, in the market. But in the cloud, there is automatic load balancer, which is uh, no need at all. This is also a business perspective that you don't have to rely on some people. And these people are getting scarce and scarce because many people are shifting, but uh, this technology and this stuff is not no, no more appealing. That's why there are no more people are working it. But uh, if uh, this market is kind of totally shifting and you are the person who is still uh, doing on-premises data, finding resources and stuff is sometimes very, very hard. And especially if you are in European Union or the country where there is a shortage of the labor is a big problem. So yeah, so um, with platform, we need everything, right? How platform wise it is uh, different from the on-premises, we need to have uh, complete. Organization security is a different challenge. It is self-explanatory. <clears throat> How you perform actually um, procedure. <clears throat> So, how many people you need to give access to and blah, 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 many different uh, issues are down the long line. So then, uh, you know, the big uh, picture of uh, migration is always 7R. You need to, <clears throat> for example, have this in your mind when you um, migrate. Relocate means that which are the services which you really want to pick from the on-premises and leave. So uh, leave on the, or we can just, uh, you know, relocating. Rehost means that, uh, for example, just hosting means that you are not changing them you are not uh, doing a lot change in them or you're just re-hosting them which means that uh, you're just picking up your same thing and you're just uh, saving this instead of your computer to AWS without any change re-platforming means that for the optimization because for example my application has a um, lot of built-in sources in the Amazon which can suggest me very fast uh, based on the user location and experience and interaction that what should I suggest him and what are the point of interest. For example, if somebody already been to Italy and uh, this summer I will show him Spain and out of interest to somebody is, uh, you know, like historical stuff a lot then I could prioritize based on his personal uh, previous visits and something like that. So these require machine learning and uh, natural language processing modeling and for example for that re-platforming is a little bit necessary and somebody would told me that well you need to refactor or re-platform yourself because uh, 
you need to make your application more uh, optimized or ready for the cloud and getting or interacting with cloud services. So, I mean, in the most practically, this is the stuff which is mostly happen when you do because uh, all other uh, re-hosting or, uh, you know, uh, just uh, shifting application, state forward, uh, number one is not giving much uh, edge and secondly, it's not very practical and people are not doing this. Even if they have to pay a little bit more, they, they won't go for it. And uh, reprocessing means that all the licensing services, for example, you need, for example, other than Amazon cost, what are the other third party tools I need to repurchase uh, additional to that to make uh, my application work on the cloud? Retain are the, what are the services and what are the stuff which I don't want to shift on uh, cloud? and they should be serving from on-premises or my computer so that you need to decide and then retiring means that when the application is completely a clone of applications shift from the on-premises to head to the cloud and then there is no more need to manage two services uh, independently you can kill or retire those from your existing system so this is retiring so there are these are the seven hours of the migration strategies right Great. Uh, when we talk about uh, migration, then uh, there's a big topic uh, comes into the picture called uh, data migration. And uh, of course, uh, if it is a small organization, no problem. But when it's a big organization and multinational organizations working in across the continent and across the globe, they might have a petabyte or exabyte of data. And uh, this much data over the internet, number one, is sometimes not very secure. And uh, secondly, to shift that data uh, might be your bandwidth is not very good or some other reason could be there. Right now, the internet is getting better and better, but again, the petabyte of data and in secure manner is uh, sometimes you don't want your data to expose on the internet while transferring to the Amazon. In between, something could happen. That's why. Uh, Amazon has Snow Family Service. What this Snow Family Service in short means that they give you a hard drive at your address. They send you that on the postal address and so you connect that device offline to your data. You migrate the, these um, devices are highly optimized for very fast data uh, transfer and you uh, load your data securely uh, without any corruption and uh, you send back uh, to AWS and AWS keep their data and make available for you on the cloud. So yeah, that's in short the Snow family. That was uh, Snow Cone, you know, and uh, Snowball. Right. So, really? Snowball Edge Storage is uh, something, a small computer, you know, which is optimized for data gathering. So, they could send you, for example, Snowball Edge Compute. Um, optimized means that is a small computer uh, with, uh, uh, with a big hard drive and uh, they could send you, you know, to shift the data. Innovation, this is not a very big topic and uh, not very important too, but uh, you know, innovation means that um, AWS always uh, rely or let's say like that um, is creating a competitive edge or they are uh, one step ahead in the market or there must be some value addition for the people to entice or um, convince them that please shift to the cloud. So these innovation topic means that uh, they have built in capabilities which is highly innovative and uh, uh, getting, giving you a leading edge as compared to using on-premises. And that's why they have included it into the migration topic. 
And one big example of that is Lambda, because Lambda is kind of uh, serverless computing, which is I have discussed in my previous um, tutorial as well. That serverless is a real a real thing, and it's a really uh, easy, highly effective, optimized, cost efficient way of running the application nowadays, and all the cloud platforms, which are three in principle, a big three or four, they all are uh, giving that following the same footprint uh, um, that uh, Amazon is doing. And it is self-explanatory that they are giving you some cutting edge, which is only available uh, using the AWS innovation. Otherwise, you cannot achieve, or this is very hard to achieve on the personal level. And then <clears throat> Code Whisper is um, AI based code suggestion completion, security vulnerable suggestion stuff, which when you write a program, it tells you that program you have written is more um, prone to uh, error and uh, might be some security could be compromised if you write this style of code and you need to change it, for example, if you write direct. For example, you write secret or password of something within the code and it would suggest you that please remove this and uh, do this with an environmental variable or some other. Well, they have some benefit for sure. And uh, that's uh, that's a pretty much it. That's a pretty much uh, stuff. Which you need to... Uh, what is the characteristics of a uh, good um, architecture framework it should be um, you know any architecture you design for the shifting or uh, creating even sources from scratch on cloud operationally should be highly perfect highly excellent security concept should be keep kept in mind it should be reliable which means that um, Interruption of services shouldn't be happen, or in case of interruption or disaster, it should be highly recoverable. That means uh, reliability. Performance efficiency means that it should give uh, seamless uh, performance as well. And costing should be balanced. It's not that you're creating all this feature, but on absurdly high cost, then there is no meaning for these things to create. And it should be sustainable for our environment too. You should keep in mind that um, create in most efficient way, uh, which is uh, possible in architecture, so that uh, in the end it is sustainable for our environment too, which is a great thing. With that, thank you very much, um, and uh, thank you very much for watching all this tutorial. If you are following along, and that's a whole module of AWS training. So if you want to get uh, a feeling that how you should attempt your exam and uh, what is the segregation of the questions, percentage of concept and stuff, please uh, go to introduction video again and check it. And then uh, you can also watch these, these uh, nine tutorial one by one to get a feeling alongside with uh, a tutorial or lab on uh, hand on session on the lab of AWS console which is also included here thank you very much